Hi there, it's Sunday and this is what's for dinner. It's early in the morning and I'm cooking up some sausage. This is what I call cooking once and eating twice. Sausage gravy for breakfast and then pizza for dinner. I'm getting the base of our pizza set up by using these store-bought pizza crusts from Walmart. I'm just opening them up and then spreading them out on the baking pans on some parchment paper just to make cleanup a lot easier. Um, I did some research and some soul searching, I guess, and tried to find some dinner ideas that were super easy that I could handle on my scooter and I just baked those uh, pizza crusts for about five minutes in the oven. My husband is very picky about pizza crust and so I did not want a soggy pizza crust. I'm using some great value uh, pizza sauce just pouring that all over there and I've never used this before and to me uh, the sauce is what makes the pizza this was just okay don't know if I would buy it again and if I did I may want to doctor it up a little bit I don't know but I used some of that sausage that I cooked up earlier in the day as the next layer I like my toppings under the cheese and the rest of the family likes their toppings on top of the cheese so we are just compromising here and we're gonna put the sausage underneath the cheese and then everything else on top of the cheese so next I'm just gonna put a whole bag of cheese on each pizza I love cheese and we like our pizza really cheesy since I had my foot surgery, I've been really leaning on those easy to put together meals like pizza. And with pizza, you can make it as easy or as hard as you want. I mean, you could literally just do cheese, sauce, and the crust, of course. Or you can pile it high with um, whatever you want. Um, unfortunately, I had some of these bacon pieces in the fridge as well as cooking the sausage ahead of time. So I literally only had to assemble this pizza and um, chop up an onion because we do like onions on our pizzas sometimes. So here I have all of my toppings that I'm layering on. I have the bacon pieces, the sausage, and some pepperoni. And we're doing lots of pepperoni because why not? And then I just came back in with those chopped up pepperoni uh, or onion pieces. Uh, and that was really probably the hardest part for me. Give me all your love. Give me all your love. Our pizza turned out really good and to keep it super simple we just served it up with some salad and some cottage cheese on the side. Here I'm teaching Bill how to use the ice cream machine and he wanted some dessert and I had the ingredients on hand for a while now and just never got around to making it and he was more than willing to help so he got started by pouring in some heavy whipping cream and some condensed sweetened milk to get started next he added some vanilla this recipe also has some softened cream cheese a can of strawberry pie filling and some crushed up golden Oreos in it. I'll be sure to link that recipe in the description box for you. Hold my hand and hear the words I say. Close your eyes and let us fade away. Tell the secret place for you and me. Let our minds be caught up. added a little 
more heavy cream than was called for so we were really pushing the limit with our ice cream maker and so what did we do we just pushed it a little further with those cookies but in the end it all worked out well and this was our evening dessert and I let mine sit a little long and it got a little melty but trust me it was absolutely delicious It's Monday and keeping dinners simple and easy enough for me to make with my new physical limitations, I am relying on my crock pot to make um, crock pot jambalaya. And to get started, I am just putting some chicken breast and some smoked sausage into the crock pot. I did not trim off the fat off of the chicken because it will render down and give this jambalaya a lot of good flavor. I just um, had a box of Aldi brand jambalaya mix in my cabinet and I wanted to get that used up. So this meal is based on using up what we had in our pantry. I added the two cups of water that it called for on the box and then I just put that lid on and let it cook for a while until um, that chicken got cooked up. I had a doctor's appointment that day, so I have this new boo, and it is heavy. So anyway, later on, I added a can of tomatoes. It's like a paint up place that only we can see. And I also added in some deveined and tail off shrimp and then mixed it all in there the shrimp do not take that long at all to cook so you want to make sure that you add that at the very end and so all i did was mix it into that hot broth and then put the lid back on so that it could finish cooking i did cook up a pan of jiffy cornbread to go along with it this is just a very simple boxed cornbread but it was delicious and so here is my finished bowl of jambalaya sorry about the lighting I am eating a lot of meals in our living room lately but this was so good and so comforting it was actually cold on this day on Tuesday my foot was sore so I just made a dump and go crock pot recipe you try do you know i'm looking and i can't help but smile do you know how much i love you you put my favorite song on i put my feet up and we just sing along and i can't help but feeling just loving On Wednesday, I wasn't really feeling like cooking, so I asked Bill to bring home some Subway. And here is what my sandwich looked like. I had a turkey with tomato, bacon, cheese, lettuce, and mayo. And we also had some chips. 
Then on Thursday, I was really wanting some spaghetti, so I had to do a quick grocery order and get the ingredients delivered so that I could whip up a pot of spaghetti. I got a couple extra things, of course, but here I'm getting the ground beef cooked up and I'm using this garlic um, grater that I got from Timu. Just my first time ever using it and I liked it pretty well. It worked pretty simple. It's very um, flimsy feeling, but it gets the job done. I feel like I'll be able to give it a better review when I'm not leaning on the handlebars of my knee scooter, but I think I like the gadget pretty well. And then next I'm just getting a half onion chopped up that I had in my fridge and I'm just keeping it very, very simple. This sauce is um, just prego and ground beef and onion and garlic. Normally I consider spaghetti one of those meals that's super easy and something that I can whip up pretty quickly and um, definitely one that I could make standing on one leg and possibly even blindfolded. But I did find this time it was a little difficult when it came to draining off the um, fat off the meat and also lugging around the pot of water for boiling noodles and then draining those noodles. So something I probably should have had a little help with, but I did manage. Um, and then of course, here's the ingredients that I used. I did make the spaghetti early in the day and did my noodles at the end. I wanted my sauce to have a couple hours to cook and just get nice and flavorful. I just boiled up those noodles at the end and then combined my sauce and my noodles. And that was it, dinner was served. This spaghetti was all that I wanted it to be without doing any of the trendy spaghetti hacks. It was just some simple spaghetti and we served it up with some cottage cheese and some garlic bread on the side. I just want to take a quick minute to point out something that I started working on. I had my boys bring out this baking tote that was taking up prime real estate in my kitchen where I could have been storing my pots and pans which I now realize were not in the best place especially now that I am not able to bend and reach like I used to so I am going through this baking tote and getting rid of some of the items that I know I'm never going to use again and um, I'm just going to donate those so I'm now looking through my cookie cutters I have so many gingerbread men but you know what in the end I decided that I couldn't part with any of them but this is what I got my tote down to and I'm just going to take it back in the kitchen and reorganize I was able to get my baking tote consolidated down to a baking drawer I saved a few of those cupcake wrappers just to have on hand um, honestly I don't really bake that often and I most likely would use my cookie cutters to cut shapes out of cheese for a charcuterie but you don't want to be caught off guard and not have sprinkles or cupcake holders if by chance you need them around Christmas time which I probably will and I also had the um, cocoa bomb mold that I didn't even know that I had well I knew I had it somewhere I just didn't know where and so I will most likely um, kind of rearrange this stuff so that I can fit my hand mixer in here at some point but it feels so good to have this drawer available for those baking necessities if I need it my tote is now cleared out and I was able to go through all of my seasonal like dishes like these mugs that were either bought for Christmas Valentine's Day or gifted to us um, they're going to the thrift store so hopefully there's a Rachel and a William out there somewhere who can use our R&W mugs but anyway I was able to clear out a whole shelf that I can now reach for my pots and pans and although this functions well for now I will be looking into ways to organize them better there is another shelf beneath this one. It just wasn't cleared out yet, and there are doors to close it all off. But anyway, that's where we are for now. Now let's get back to cooking. Mm -hmm. 
On Friday I had a pack of chicken to use up and just could not think of anything to do with boring old chicken. So I decided to make some homemade chicken nuggets. Bill has talked about this off and on over the past couple years um, saying that somebody in his childhood made them and they were so good and that someday we should make them. So today was the day. I seasoned up these chicken chunks with some seasoning salt and some garlic powder. I did not cook all of these as nuggets. I did put some in a zip top bag and put in the freezer for a future meal. That way it's already prepped. And to get the um, crispy outer batter part uh, started, I just used some all-purpose flour and some paprika and some garlic powder as well as some seasoned salt. I do add some cayenne pepper as well off camera because we like our chicken spicy. We like everything spicy. I did add some panko breadcrumbs as well and just mixed it all in until it was nice and smooth and everything was um, mixed in throughout our batter and then I just set up a dredging station with some beaten egg and then just put my chicken in the egg and into the um, dry mix and then right into some hot oil to fry up making sure that there was room all around each nugget so that they could cook on all sides. These nuggets cook up so quick. It only takes a couple of minutes. I did cook these in batches and just used a thermometer to make sure that they were um, cooked all the way through. And we just made some tater tots in the air fryer just to keep it simple. I like to dip my chicken nuggets in mustard, but on this day I added some hot honey and made some spicy honey mustard dip and it was so good. On Saturday, Bill cooked up some taco meat and we had some tostadas for dinner. Just really simple refried beans, taco meat, and then whatever we want to top them with. I have some salsa, some cheese, and some cilantro on mine. And that was our last meal for the week. And I want to take this time to thank you all for all of your uh, well wishes and prayers. It means so much to me. I am getting better every single day and I am just so thankful to have you all for uh, support during this time. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you'll come back to see the next one. Bye for now.